Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 245 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron. Thrilled that you are here with me today. Today on the show, we are talking to Karen White on how to leave yourself clues along the way as you are writing. Um, This is one of those things that I love to talk about, to think about. It was kind of a revelation when I started writing that you could be leaving yourself clues along the way. Sometimes we know it. Sometimes we don't know it, so stick around for the conversation. Uh, You might hear in my voice that it sounds a little bit different. Of course it does. It's going to sound different for a long time. Right now, I'm coming to you from an Airbnb in Temescal, Oakland, and it's a lovely little Airbnb. It's fantastic. It has two bedrooms, which is great because then my wife gets one bedroom for all of her stuff. She likes to lay her suitcases out and get everything out, whereas I like to be a little bit more compact. And I've decided that maybe two bedrooms is the way to go. This Airbnb is particularly nice because I'm at a desk. I have a whole desk. Also, it has a front little patio and a veranda, which uh, is kind of surrounded by this enormous fig tree and um, what is the other one? Some kind of a plum tree and a lemon and it's on the second story and it really feels kind of tropical and wonderful to sit just surrounded by greenery on this big long veranda with a beautiful table. So as soon as I finish recording this, I have decided I'm going to go out there and do a little bit of reading because I don't think any of us take enough time to read on the veranda, do we? Um, One of the things that broke my heart a little bit about leaving our house, which we did on Monday, Tuesday, two days ago, uh, is that at the very last minute, one of the very last things I gave away on Craigslist uh, was our hammock. And I am a hammock girl. I love a hammock. I love to be in a hammock. I love to be reading. The number one thing I like to do in a hammock is read. The number two thing I like to do is to fall asleep while reading. And it is not one of those things that I prioritize. And I only did it once this year in 2021 since taking the hammock fabric part out and hanging it up for the season. I did it once and maybe only for 20 minutes. And I was in a hurry and I was doing other things around the house and getting things ready. Um, And I regret that. And I want more time outside with a book, Chillaxin. So I am thinking about prioritizing things. For the last four months and approximately one day, I prioritized moving. I also prioritized working. Working, work is something that I am good by now at prioritizing, even when it doesn't feel good. I just do it. Um, That's fine. But we decided to move And four months and one day later, we had sold the house and were completely out. On Tuesday, we left the keys. We left a bottle of champagne for the new owners. Um, You can always see those kind of things if you follow me on Instagram at Rachel Heron. And it was really emotional. You know, you guys have been with me on this journey. A lot of you have as we get ready to go and actually locking the door with the keys that were no longer, oh my God, I just cry thinking about it, Um, with the keys that were no longer ours, leaving the keys inside a residence that we no longer own. Um, But there's this also real childish reaction that is like, oh my God, I can't believe we never burned down the house. I can't believe we didn't destroy things while we were living there for 15 years. We were adult enough to, to do this, to have a house and then to sell it and to make a little bit of money and to walk away happy and healthy. Um, Those walls of that house saw so much happiness and a lot of grief, of course, and (laughs) lots of squabbling. You know, it's a lot of life. But more than anything else, I think it saw happiness. And I just hope that the people who bought it from us have half that much happiness and they'll be set. So um, that was a big emotional thing that happened this week. And I've been talking to classes, um, my two classes that I'm teaching right now, and thinking again about prioritizing because in the 90-day cycle that I teach, we are at about week nine, and this is where enthusiasm flags regularly. This is just where it drops off. And I just wanted to mention this real briefly, that our enthusiasm for doing our writing will always flag 
It will always fail. We will read a fantastic book on writing or we'll read a fantastic novel or memoir and we will be so inspired to write and to create that space where we are writers and we are actively doing our work. And then that might last for a few weeks, even a few months sometimes, and then life gets in the way. We constantly have to reprioritize our writing. So, right, oh, I wonder if you can hear that breeze that's coming through the window right on the microphone. Um, it's really a gorgeous day and the wind is just moving through this space. Um, but I want you to ask yourself, where are you in terms of prioritizing your writing? Most writers, you've heard me say this before and I'll say it again many times in my life, uh, most writers don't write, especially first drafts, more than an hour or two a day. More than an hour or two of first draft writing tends to exhaust the brain. It has been proven that deep work, even by uh, people with high levels of mastery, can't usually maintain that kind of deep mental thought work more than three or four hours max. So it doesn't take long to do your life's work. It's just that you have to figure out where you're going to fit that hour or two into your day, into your busy life, into your busy schedule. So when was the last time you sat down and said, okay, I'm going to get one hour a day, four days a week on my book, and then make it happen, put it on the calendar, actually do it rather than just hoping you will find a time to do it. You're never going to find a time to do it, my friend. Um, it doesn't happen. We are occasionally moved to do work without planning it, but it is not a reliable way to get your work, your book or books done. So just a reminder, if writing has slipped away from you a little bit, it is time to reprioritize, fit it into your schedule. Dude, I am in a stranger's apartment in a place I've never been. And still I know the bare minimum of what I need to do to progress on the project which I am working with right now. And I show up and do it. And it doesn't matter how much you have to do in a day. You are never going to be less busy than you are right now. Never. We always think we are. Uh, but you can't wait till the job gets easier or till the kids leave the house or until the kids go to back to preschool. You got to find those 10 minutes, those 15 minutes. I'm being very prescriptive and bossy right now. Uh, but I think that this is just something I'm hearing a lot from other people. The difficulty in finding the time in their day. I think that there's um, a way that we speak about that that is not helpful. We talk about finding the time in our day. We don't find the time in our day. Every once in a while you can find time in your day, but mostly, honestly, my days are booked a.m. to p.m., hour by hour. I have to make time. I have to sink my teeth into the day and chew it out of the day. There's blood and sinew left behind after I create and force myself to find the time where I write. And then I show up and I do a crappy job and it feels a little bit uncomfortable and I'm used to that discomfort and I show up the next day and I either write more first draft crappy words or I fix the ones from the day before if that's where I'm at in my process. Where are you at in your process? Where do you need to find that time? Where do you need to make that commitment to yourself? And again, you're going to make that commitment and you're going to keep it for a while and then you're going to fail and that is the writer's life. And then you realize, oh, I failed again. Need to reprioritize. It's just like in meditation. Meditation. The magic is in getting distracted and bringing your thought, your thoughts back to what you were trying to focus on. Your breath or a candle flame or whatever it is you're trying to do. The magic is in the distraction. The magic of keeping coming back, back to writing is noticing when you haven't been writing and bring yourself back gently and with love and sometimes with sharp teeth. You can have gentleness and love and sharp teeth at the same time. As long as you are simply biting yourself, don't bite anybody else. It's not, it's not hygienic or sanitary. Um, so those are my words to you today. And I, I don't know, I'm just feeling pretty freaking good that we did it, that we got out. I keep saying that I hope the hardest part is over of moving. I hope the hardest part is over. We both have two suitcases here and a backpack. That's what we own. And, um... I, now we just have to move. Now we just have to 
move from place to place. We're going to be moving around Oakland a little bit. We're going to be going to Idaho and then down south to LA to see family and friends before we leave. And then in 23 days from today, we're on a plane to our new life. And I am very excited about it. Uh, Maybe next week I'll try to remember to talk about fear setting, which is something that I did recently. And it really helped me become truly excited about it. I'm going to make myself a note to talk about that. Also, if you're waiting for a mini episode because you asked me a question, um, because you're at that $5 a month level on Patreon and I haven't answered it yet, I am very sorry. Every single day I'm trying, I have a note, must do the bonus mini episode and I haven't done it because I've been too busy. And then when I do collapse on the bed, I'm just scrolling through TikTok because I'm so tired. So uh, that is coming soon. I promise. And I'll talk about fear setting next week. And I know that you're going to enjoy this interview with Karen White. Please come find me on the internet where I live, wherever that is. You can find me at basically all the places. Leave me a note with how you are doing. Oh, I got a really nice note from someone this week who said, I always hear you talk about your email list, but I was actually sitting at my desk this time. So I rolled over and I typed in the URL and I joined your mailing list. And y'all, My writer's email list, um, haven't sent any new ones out for a while because I've been busy, but there's one already drafted on my desktop. I'm going to stop making excuses. But my autoresponder sequence is, I think it's probably seven or eight emails long. And it is juicy goodness of gifts, basically, I'm giving you of things I have learned the hard way from writing. It's all free stuff. Just sign up and get it. It's letters of encouragement. That's all it is. So um, if you're sitting at a place where you could reach your phone or at a computer, type in rachelherron.com slash write and just sign up for my email newsletter Um, right now. Why don't you do it? Rachel Heron. Rachel spelled funny. R-A-C-H-A-E-L-H-E-R-R-O-N dot com slash write. Sign yourself up for that. Um, The thing I love from that the most is that in that first email I ask, I ask and I want to hear from you what you are struggling with. I read every letter and I respond to every letter because you matter to me. So I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to sign up and uh, enter that correspondence with me. It's um, I always complain about my email backlog and email is the bane of my existence except for hearing from writers. That is the joy of my existence. So please come get some email into my inbox from writers. All right, I'm feeling a little silly and a little punchy and I'm going to go sit on a veranda and read a book. I'm reading The Echo Wife. It's a trip right now. um, And I'm really enjoying it. So I can't wait to do that right the heck now. Enjoy the interview and get some writing. Reprioritize your time, my friends, and then tell me about it. All right. Goodbye. Okay. Well, I could not be more pleased to welcome to the show today, Karen White. Hello, Karen. Welcome. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me today. I'm thrilled to have you. Let me give you a little introduction. Karen White is the New York Times bestselling author of more than 25 novels, including the Trad Street series, Dreams of Falling, The Night the Lights Went Out, Flight Patterns, The Sound of Glass, I love that title, A Long Time Gone, and The Time Between. She is also the co-author of multiple books with New York Times bestselling authors Beatrice Williams and Lauren Willig. She grew up in London, but now lives with her husband and two dogs near Atlanta, Georgia. And The Last Night in London is her most recent release. And we were just saying that you might hear or see some of our dogs Mm -hmm. as, as you're listening or watching this. Mm -hmm. Um, So welcome, welcome. Your new book is so exciting and I'm so thrilled to be able to talk to you about it. Thank you. This show is for writers about writers and it is about the writing process and you're so prolific. I can't wait to talk to you. about. about No, it's fantastic. No, I I am too. Um, I love talking to prolific writers, but I would love to know how you, how do you do it? How do you get it done? I, I, I honestly, I don't know when I, (laughs) you could see my desk right now. I mean, I, 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 (laughs) I have been struggling the last few months, really the last couple of years, uh, just because, you know, I have, it was easier when my kids were younger and lived at home. It was easier to organize my days. Yeah. Um, and then the more popular you become, you know, the more demands on your time. I've also inherited my older parents, which is 
a full time job and um, and it's and it's not as regulated as when you know I knew that when I dropped my kids off at school I would have X amount of time yeah. before I would have to go pick them up and even after I picked them up I could bring my laptop and take them to the you know horseback riding or whatever um, and so I was just very very diligent and now I'm just you know I'm plus the social media that you know social media is just exploding and I'm expected to spend a lot of time on social media and I didn't have that before so it was a lot easier mm -hmm. to stay focused to not be constantly you know texted or whatever I mean when my kids were growing up I had my phone I would just leave it in the car because yeah. I just wanted for emergencies or to yep there's your doggy there's my dog um, coming. <laughs> <laughs> just you know so um I, I think it's just getting harder and harder because of that, not just because of my life, but also because of the world and, and how, you know, authors now are expected to be very accessible. And, um, and, and so it, it, I don't know how I'm doing it anymore. Um, I, I, I will tell you one thing, I have like little to no downtime. So it's hard, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really working to change that, but um, I, I, I'm at a good holding pattern right now. <laughs> I'm trying to be very structured with my days, um, you know. I, but it, it's hard. It's hard. So I just, I just do what I have to do. I write whenever I can, whenever I'm not doing anything else. So you're not strictly a morning writer or an afternoon writer, but it fits in around everything else. Right. I try to yeah. be a morning rider. You know, I do get up an hour early before the dogs and my husband, because that is my best time. And I don't turn on my phone. I don't look yeah. at social media. I don't do anything, but sit at my computer. And even if it's not the best writing I can do, at least I've got something. So when I go back to it during the little snatches of time through the rest of the day, I at least have got a flow going and I know kind of where I'm heading with the scene or whatever. And that really helps because I love morning writing and um, yeah, the rest of my life would go away. <laughs> I could really, really, you know, just sit down for a few hours and, you know, and get it done. But I, I, I even not that long ago, I remember just sitting when I was on deadline and just locking myself in my office and working and writing. And it was, joyous and and now it's like oh my gosh I've got to get up and I've got to do this I've got to pay these bills for my dad and I sorry and the squeaking um yeah I love the squeaking <laughs> yeah and and I need to chase and also I have uh so my mother is Alzheimer's my dad has dementia and now my 15 year old dog not the one who's squeaking the one who is somewhere in the house has to wear a double diaper so it's like <laughs> that's a lot are your parents in the house with you Oh Lord, no. no. Okay, I was gonna they, say, they yeah, are, I, I, you no. can't write anything if that were true. Oh, oh no, my God. That, that would be the end. That would be the end of my career. Um, no, they are in, uh, they are in a facility, but I uh, take care of everything, yeah. everything. Medical, yeah. Doctors, insurance, pills, all that. I, f I feel honored that you were able to spend the time with me here. Well, That's fantastic. Fun thing, you know, I know. And, and, and I'm talking. honored I can, you know, take care of my parents, but you know, I have to remind myself that my career is, is extremely important to me. And I work very hard on these books and on this book and, and, and this is what I want to do. And if I have to like not take a vacation for four years, which is kind of where I am right now, uh, to get it all done. Then that's what I'm going to do because it's temporary. This is a season. Yes. It's not always going to be this way. So I really, I, I really like thinking about writing and our lives in the, in terms of seasons. Um, right. it's really important for our sustainability as writers. Exactly. Exactly. And I, you know, I do try to, um, I, I try to relax. I take breaks during the day. Yeah. Um, you know, like I'll do a 20 minute nap because I can't live. Cause I, like I said, I get er up very early. <laughs> so it's a long day and I normally don't turn my computer off till 10 at night. And that's just Ooh. email, email and social media, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And, you know, I just took a 25 minute reading break on the couch, which yes. was right before we talked. And I never yes. do that. And it just felt so good and so delicious. Well, I need what? to do That's it more the often. Other thing. Absolutely. I, 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 I love to read and I was realizing I wasn't reading anything. Friends would have books come out and I wouldn't have any idea, you know, what they were about. And um, I do a lot of audio books, you know, cause yeah. I drive a lot, but yeah. I love a print book. Yeah. So I've been doing, and that's what I do. I do, I take reading breaks during the day. Usually right before I write, I'd like to read maybe 15 yes. minutes. And then, so that's my treat. So when I've, you know, gone doing stuff and I have to get back to writing and it's like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to write. Like, well, you can have 15 minutes of reading first and then you can write. I love that. And it primes the well and serves as inspiration. Absolutely. And there's so many great 
great books out right now. I know there's so many, there's so many, including yours. Um, what is your biggest joy when it comes to writing? You know, it's when, well, typing the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'm definitely one of those writers who, um, I, and again, I can never remember the, the famous writer who said this, but um, I don't enjoy writing. I enjoy having written <laughs> yes. um, because it's, it's hard. It's hard, you yeah. know, and, and you, I've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. And I still, you know, I still find the joys when I'm, when I'm in that rhythm. I mean, it's harder lately because I'm so fractured. Um, but when I get the time to sit and do nothing, but just, you know, dive into my characters and my stories that that is the biggest joy but I have to say and and something that has been really missing during this COVID year when I haven't been uh, allowed to go out and see readers I love talking to readers who have read my books and they want to talk about these characters mm. as if they are as real to them as they are to me yeah. and you know what it meant to them and and I do I get and they they do email me and that is you know just lovely you know when I hear from people um, you know, say, you know, just the kindest things about what my words have meant to them in their lives. And these are people, you know, I might never have met if it weren't through the words of my book. So that, that is a wonderful thing. I might not be a neurosurgeon, you know, and saving lives, but at least I like to think that I have positively impacted other people's lives. Absolutely. That's what we do. That's amazing. Would you mind sharing a craft tip of any sort with our writer listeners? Yeah. One, um, one thing that has become very important to me since I have to stop writing and do something else and then get back to the writing like throughout the day. And that is exhausting. Yeah. You know, um, it's so much, it really is easier to just sit down and do it in one long stretch for however long you have. And it's, it's hard this way. Um, and I find that if I leave my writing where, whatever I'm doing before I have to stop it, if I leave it on, like in the middle of a sentence, the middle of a paragraph, the middle of an action, uh, the middle of dialogue, then it's easier to jump back in instead of like finishing a scene and then like, yeah, I'm gonna get start because it's so hard, especially as your day goes through and you're getting more and more tired and not like meant, you know, physically tired, but for me, the mental fatigue is real because I'm juggling so many balls in the air and, um, and it does, it gets, it gets exhausting. So by the time, like I try to do my last round of writing, usually around four o'clock, um, mm -hmm. and, um, sometimes five or six. And, um, if I haven't set it up, there's just no way that's going to be, I'll start like, Oh, I, I know I need to check Instagram. You know, I become like the magpie <laughs> that's shiny, you know, <laughs> so, but I find that's a really big help. And then it just, it, it just, it's like the jumping board to dive into your story again. I love that you set that up throughout your day. And I also love how well it dovetails with the idea of you starting early in the morning. I have this theory that if we touch it early in the morning, it just makes it easier yes. to go back to all day long because we're not scared of it. But for yes. some reason, if it's 4 p.m. and we've been putting it off, now I've had an entire day of yes. now, I'm, now I'm scared. Now I'm really yeah. scared. Now there's a reason why I'm scared. And 100% and like when I have to do... Um, uh, doctor's appointments and things, I never make them first thing in the morning, even if it's a fasting appointment, yeah. because I want to be able to get those, you know, that hour in, in the morning. And, and then I do a workout, you know, cause that kind of, you know, invigorates the brain and, you know, then get dressed, whatever. And then I can do other things. Um, but I don't want to start, you know, with social media because the longer you push it, it's like, you know, studying for that test or doing that homework, you know, when you're in school, the longer you put it off, the uglier it is. So just, What's just do it because, and, and remind yourself that this is something you choose to do. Yeah. This is something that at least for me uh, at one point, you know, did give me a lot of joy and it still gives me a lot of joy. It's just, um, I'm, I'm, it always tends to be the last thing in my life that I get to get to do. And it's the one thing that I want to do, which is kind of funny how upside down my life is. Um, so I find that if I just carve out, even if it's just chunks of time during the day, but I have to be very, very diligent about it and, um, um, and very disciplined. And I am, I'm very disciplined. I, I don't, I don't think you could write this many books and live life, <laughs> you know, um, without being very disciplined. 
I love that. What thing in your life affects your writing in a surprising way? Like negative or bad? Or, or either, positive. either way, good or bad. You know, it's funny. Um, and I, because we're all writers, like I really absorb things, um, whether it be um, a movie I watch with a friend or a series I'm watching or a book I'm reading, mm. the emotions really affect me. Ooh, um, how so? Well, like right now I'm, I'm not binge watching cause I don't have, like when I eat lunch, I turn on the TV for yeah. 20 minutes and, and I've been watching, it's, um, it's an Australian series. It was seven or eight, um, 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 uh, what do you call them? Not episodes. Um, oh, seasons. Seasons. Thank you. That ended in 2015 and it's set in Australia, um, sort of at the, uh, in the fifties and, um, I'm addicted, but there's so much family tension and drama. I'm just like drawn into it. And um, I just find that it sort of, it, it flips the light switch on my own emotions, you know, mm. not the same emotions, but it just kind of invigorates me. It just kind of electrifies me so that when I go back to my own, I'm just a little more, you know, ready to impart emotions into my characters. So we kind of, I, I think of it sometimes like I'm a vampire. I'm stealing some of that energy yeah, exactly. in order to put it in our own. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What is the name of that series? It's called A Place to Call Home. I've never heard of it. And it sounds so fabulous. It's on um, Prime Video. And oh, good. I am, and, and I told my daughter about it and she's addicted. And I was at um, a store dropping off uh, uh, books just to, uh, uh, long story, but um, there was like five or six uh, people in the store, all masked, all socially distanced. And um, one of the, oh, and I mentioned that I'd been watching this series and I said, a place to call home. And every single woman it's like, oh my gosh, that is like so amazing. So you have to, it's so good. It's like every storyline and it's not like, I, I want to call it, it's not a soap opera because it's not I, because you, it's unexpected. It's the oh, way it sounds the wonderful. Yeah, the way the characters change and grow. It's like it's not like in soap operas, you know, where Erica Kane was always the same person. You know, there is kind of one character like that who we just can't wait till she dies because uh, she's so <laughs> evil. But you know, like they all change and learn and, and, and it's, it's just, an, it's a brilliant show. I have been, it. I have been really looking for a new series. I've been looking for something. I've been looking for something exactly like that to kind of yes. energize well, myself. I was too. So. I was too. And like I said, there's seven or eight, um, um, seasons. Thank you. I'm sorry. It is. I've only, like I said, this is my third cup of the day and it's got five <laughs> o'clock in the, um, <laughs> it's fabulous. Season. They so it's like, once you start, it's like, and my daughter, my daughter is like way behind. And I'm like, would you please catch up so we can talk about what's going on? <laughs> so. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for that recommendation. Speaking of recommendations, um, what's the best book you read recently and why did you love it? Wow. I've read so many because I've been given a lot to read yeah. for, um, yeah, there's so many books out right now. Um, so, and I, and again, I listen to a lot on Audible. Um when I recently finished on Audible is uh, one of my favorite, I, I haven't read her in a while, but she's one of my favorite um, authors, um, Simone, Simone St. James. No, I don't and know it's her. it's called um, The Sundown Motel. Ooh. And it's sort of like, if you like my Trad Street series, so there's a little bit of a paranormal thing, very spooky. She's such a great writer, such a great writer. Um, just really, really gives you those tinglies. And um, yeah, really. Um, and that's the first one I've listened to um, audio. I've read the other ones in, in paper version. Um, and also historical wise, I, oh gosh. Um, so, and I have to give a shout out. I haven't read Beatrice's uh, coming book, which comes out in June, but um, Lauren re uh, just had a book come out in March, The Band of Sisters, mm -hmm. which is historical fiction, World War One, And she found out about this 
Smith College Relief Unit while doing research for All the Ways We Say Goodbye, which is a book that we wrote together. And um, she was, you know, doing research on uh, Christmas customs in France in during World War One. And she came up with this note about or newspaper article about this 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 group of women from Smith College that came to help at the front. Oh, wow. And she, nobody had ever heard of this, but um, she, because she's such an excellent research person, she found, uh, you know, letters that these women had written back home that are in the Smith College archives. And so it just kind of, and it's, it is, it is my, I love all of her books, but this is my favorite so far. The, the characters are just so well done in the story and you feel like you were there and you laugh, you cry with the women. And it's, it's just, you know, uh, it's amazing to see how these very privileged women, um, really got their, you know, feet wet and, and really, you know, made big differences to these people who had been bombed out of their homes um, until they, they were shelled and, and they had to, to leave. But um, really an incredible story. Really, really loved it. Thank you for that recommendation. It sounds amazing. Speaking of amazing and recommendations, can you tell us a little bit about your latest book, The Last Night in London? Okay, well, you know, it took me 400 pages to write it, so I'll try to <laughs> synopsize it. So it is a... a, a it is a, a, a dual timeline story. Um, so we have um, um, late 1930s, early 1940s, so the be uh, beginning of uh, World War II in England. And then we have um, contemporary time also in England, but the main character is Southern. Um, I, um, I wrote um, Falling Home and After the Rain um, about 10 years ago, and uh, both of those books are set in a small town called Walton, Georgia. And um, one of the secondary characters is a 14 year old girl in Falling Home and an 18 year old girl in um, After the Rain. And ever since those books came out, I've been asked, asked by readers to tell the rest of Maddie's story. So I've been looking for the perfect story for her. And that's why she's the lead character. Actually, there are two lead characters. She's the lead character in the modern story um, in The Last Night in London. And the, um, the other character is Precious DuBose, who you might remember from All the Ways We Said Goodbye. And we see her there at the Paris Ritz in 1964. And she was also everybody's favorite character. And people have been saying, we need to see more of Precious. So Beatrice and Lauren, let me use that character for this book. And in All, um, All the Ways We Said Goodbye, and believe me, this is not a sequel. These are just, I'm just borrowing characters. So it's like yeah. kind of a reunion for me and you don't have to read How the other. How fun that is. Um, but it would be fun. You know, if, if you enjoyed this book, you might enjoy reading those other ones. But um, so yeah, they let me borrow Precious. And in the book, All the, way, uh, All the Ways We Said Goodbye, Precious alludes to some big event back in the war. And you don't really know. And she talks about a big loss in her life and something that she has always regretted. But we don't know what that is. And when we wrote that, we didn't know what that was. So I thought, I'm going to put her in this book so we can find out what that is. And so we do find out. So we have Maddie Warner. Um, she is now a journalist, a freelance journalist. And she is hired by a friend who is now a, um, an editor at British Vogue. She has hired um, uh, Maddie to interview Precious DuBose, for her 100th anniversary, uh, Precious has donated her clothes to the London Museum, um, London Fashion Museum, and it's going to be on a theme of fashion in a time of crisis because Precious DuBose was a fashion model in London um, during the 30s and 40s, and then in Paris during the 50s. Um, so she has these gorgeous clothes, and Maddie's like, "Oh, that sounds like um, you know amazing." Um, so they, so she comes to London to interview Precious, and of course, both of them have pasts, both of them have sorrows in their life, and both of them have secrets that they are trying to hide from others. And uh, so as they as they get together, it's instead of just a, a straightforward interview, um, they both find that they are peeling back the layers and discovering um, an unexpected friendship and also ways to heal uh, through their connection with each other. Um, and the best part about it is it is set in both time periods in the place where I lived for seven years in London on Regent's Park, a building, building that did sustain damage during the Blitz. So it was the oh, perfect wow. setting for this book. Oh, how fun. And I think you did a, 
amazing, an amazing job summing up 400 pages into Thank you. I, yeah, this I do teaser. ramble. I, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to. That wasn't rambling. That was short. wonderful. And where can we find you out on the internet? Oh gosh, where can't you find me these days? <laughs> um, the, the best place to start is uh, my website, karen-white.com. Um, it's in my background here. Um, there you can find all the links to my social media. I'm on Twitter at, at Karen White Wright, W R I T E. And I'm on Instagram at Karen White Wright, W R I T E. And uh, Facebook, Karen White, or author Karen White. Perfect. Karen, it's been a treat to talk to you. Thank you so very much for Rachel, talking to thank us you. today. It was my pleasure. Thank all right. You. Happy writing. Bye. Thank you. You too.